Hello there conference. My name's Gavin Harper. I'm from the University of Birmingham and today I'd like to talk to you about towards an integrative automated approach for end of life electric vehicle treatment. Fei Chang, Gao Xing, Jin Chen, Neng Zhai, Zhe Gang Jie, Yao Qing Wo. So within the University of Birmingham, I'm part of the Birmingham Energy Institute and within that we have the Birmingham Centre for Strategic Elements and Critical Materials which is working on a range of projects concerned with materials criticality. One of those projects is the Faraday Institution's Relib project on the reuse and recycling of lithium-ion batteries. It's from that project that a lot of the research that I'm going to talk about today has come from. There are a range of partners with the University of Birmingham, so also Newcastle University, Oxford Brookes University, the University of Edinburgh, the University of Liverpool, Cardiff University, the University of Leicester and Diamond Light Source. Um, that project's in the process of renewal, so there's going to be some new partners that join that project. There are three main themes to that project, so it's divided up into different work packages. You've got the front end of the technical recycling, shown in blue, so that's the gateway testing and dismantling, where batteries come in, they're diagnosed, categorised and sorted. And then you've got the categorisation and recycling, so the back end of that process, once they've been through the gateway testing. And within the project, we've got a broader piece on business regulation, the law and policy that is looking at things as diverse as the life cycle analysis of recycling processes and the techno-economic evaluation of those processes and the policy and legal and regulatory framework within which those technologies sit. So we can forecast that in the years to come there will be more vehicle sales as a result of increased demand but the types of vehicles on our road are going to change as internal combustion engine vehicles are phased out and electric vehicles and ultra low emission vehicles gain market share. And as a result of that we can see that there's going to be a change in the types of different materials that are needed to produce those vehicles. So here is some forecasting work that's being done by Professor Rob Elliott at the School of Economics in the University of Birmingham and you can see that demand for iron and steel will go down because we won't be using that for internal combustion engines and also the composition of vehicle body structures will change as we move to lighter vehicles that make more use of aluminium and composites and we can also see the growth in demand for a range of other materials including copper um, for you know wiring, for motor windings, for interconnections and we can see a growth in the use of things like nickel, chromium, manganese, cobalt, lithium um, and also although it's not on there we would also expect to see an increase in the demand for neodymium, rare earth magnets used in permanent magnet motors. So we often talk about the waste management hierarchy with prevention coming at the top so if we can avoid creating waste in the first place and then following that reuse, recycling, recovery of energy and then finally disposal as a hierarchy of options in terms of waste disposal. Now within recycling what I want to cover in this presentation is that there are a range of processes from present battery recycling which is focused around shredding and comminution of cells to passivate them and often techniques like pyro and hydrometallurgy to recover the materials but what we want to move towards is more advanced battery recycling processes with less manual labour input more automation and artificial intelligence that means that the complexity of the process is going to increase but the benefit of that is that we might be able to extract purer material streams which are of a higher value and retain more of the energy that's been input into producing those material streams in the first place 
and our hope is that we can increase the amount of materials recovered and the value of the materials recovered. So lithium ion batteries are quite a complicated structure um, compared to say for example lead acid batteries which are very simple and enjoy high recycling rates at the moment and high recovery rates of materials. There's a lot more complexity to lithium ion batteries in terms of their structure which makes them difficult to recycle. And there's also a great deal of variation in the chemistries that are employed by different manufacturers and also the packaging designs of electric vehicle batteries. So there are different types of cells. There are pouch cells which are sort of flat plastic laminated together with the layers of material inside. Prismatic cells which have a rigid outer case containing the battery and cylindrical cells um, which obviously we're quite familiar with um, with their use in portable electronics um, and the sort of cells that are employed by Tesla and some other manufacturers. And what we envisage is a circular economy for electric vehicle batteries where perhaps midway through the life of the electric vehicle you might extend its life with a reconditioned battery pack and then at the end of life we deal with batteries intelligently trying to extract the most value out of them so considering whether the pack can be remanufactured into a new electric vehicle pack have a second use in an application like stationary power storage or if we need to recycle the pack and recover the material and if we are going to recycle it we want to do it as intelligently as possible using processes that seek to recover as much of the material and value as we can. If we want to optimise the materials that we recover and to be able to separate battery packs and diagnose which batteries are suitable for reuse, remanufacture and recycle, we need to be able to break the packs apart and disassemble them. And at the moment this is being done manually but as I've said earlier, we want to move to more automation as part of that process. And there are different challenges at different scales of the problem. So in terms of actually removing the pack from the vehicle in the first place, it's obviously something that is very physically heavy. So there's manual handling considerations around the weight of that pack. There are high voltages present but also there's variation as a result of the vehicle service life. So different vehicles, different shapes and sizes, but also we don't know what's happened during that vehicle's lifetime. It may have been involved in a crash which has warped the chassis, so the bolts are in slightly different places or jammed or misaligned. There's a lot of variety in the different fixings. Um, a mechanic may have tried to fix something over the years and ended up rounding off the bolts or they might be rusted or corroded and so there's a lot of variety to deal with which is less of a challenge for a human but if you want to automate that process you're going to need some really smart robotics then once you've got the pack out of the vehicle there are other challenges at the next scale of disassembly taking the pack apart so for example there are lots of wiring looms within battery packs and because wiring looms are flexible they aren't always in the same place so that presents a challenge for the robot because you need to employ um, a bit of autonomous decision making, artificial intelligence, um, machine vision because you can't necessarily go to the same place and perform a prescribed motion you need to be able to look at that pack and intelligently decide and plan the path that the actuator is going to take to manipulate that wiring loom out of place. And so there are different things we might be able to do in the future to design for disassembly, so maybe replacing flexible wiring with buzz bars or rigid connections. And there's a whole series of challenges around data, so we don't know what condition the pack is in, we don't know what's happened during its service life, what sort of chemistry is in the batteries that that pack contains and so there's a real opportunity for 
design for recycling including data maybe having like a digital passport that accompanies the battery pack that contains information and it could be that that passport is dynamically updated with information um, from the vehicle during use from the battery management system so at the point of disassembling the pack there are also lots of hazards around the potential for off-gassing um, fire and thermal events and also um, thinking about uh, the actual process of disassembly so for example if you're using a metal tool and you drop that and that creates a short circuit um, there's obviously problems there in terms of a thermal event it's easy to explain that to a person but as far as robotics are concerned how do you develop robust um, mechanisms and algorithms to ensure that as things are manipulated um, metal tools can't become dislodged and drop into that pack and then at the point at which you've disassembled the pack and you've got down to the module level there are more challenges especially around the use of glues and adhesives to stick things together because it's very difficult to separate things that aren't joined with mechanical fixings um, things might also be soldered together and we don't know the condition of the module in terms of the state of charge and state of health so these are all problems that we're working to try and address um, some of them might be through using advanced diagnostic techniques to be able to ascertain the state of health but obviously with design for recycling we might be able to automate that in the future by being able to extract information from battery management systems some of the challenges around glues and adhesives um, if we want to move beyond just shredding batteries we need to think more carefully about so what approaches can we use for existing batteries that have been designed as they have by manufacturers and how might we influence that design in the future to create batteries that are more easy to recycle and then of course once you've got the modular part and you get down to the cell level how can you cleanly separate anodes and cathode material quickly um, because it needs to be an efficient process but also cleanly achieving really good material segregation because obviously the better you can sort materials um, the higher quality product that you can end up with and the better the outcomes of the recycling process and so within the context of thinking about the multiple levels of battery disassembly you've got different safety challenges at each level of that hierarchy from taking the vehicle to taking the pack out to disassembly into modules and finally disassembly into cells so it's thinking about the different challenges at different levels of that disassembly hierarchy one of the real drivers for introducing increasing amounts of automation into end of life electric vehicle recycling is the skills gap so in the UK we have the Institute of the Motor Industry that speaks for vehicle makers and others involved in the motor industry and they've raised the concern around the number of train technicians in the UK capable of servicing electric vehicles and of course that's something that can be addressed over time we can train more people to be able to deal with electric vehicles but it's a challenge in the short term and the question has to be raised if you have a skilled trained workforce do you want them to be focusing on high value operations so service maintenance and repair of working electric vehicles or do you want those people to be tied up disassembling vehicles dismantling them and dealing with them at the end of life and we believe that it is possible to automate and to reduce the labor content of some of those more mundane operations at the end of a vehicle's life there are a range of different current recycling technologies um, one of the simplest at the moment is pyrometallurgy where um, one of the disadvantages with that process is that there are lots of materials like aluminium, the lithium and the manganese which end up in a slag and can't be recovered 
um, and then the subsequent processes of pyrometallurgy need to go into a hydrometallurgical process to further refine them. By contrast, um, some of the other processes that are on the market at the moment require the module to be opened first of all. Um, often water spray or gas blanket is used to ameliorate any negative safety concerns associated with opening those modules in air. Um, and then there's a range of different physical separation processes which can be applied to separate those materials before hydrometallurgy. Now one of the things in common with both pyro and hydrometallurgy is that you're taking the battery cathode materials back to a form whereby they're going to need intermediate processing to turn back into cathode materials. And obviously one of the things that we would like to look at is whether you can use automation to be able to disassemble battery packs prior to direct recycling and recovery of the materials. The advantage of direct recycling could be that you preserve the value in that cathode material structure. So it's not just about the recovery of the material, it's about the recovery of the structure of those cathode materials, which is intrinsically very valuable. Now, particularly as we move to lower cobalt chemistries, where there's less intrinsic value in the materials, direct recycling might become more important in order to recover economic value from batteries. Another really important dimension to the Relive project is the business and economic side of things. So it's really important that if we can develop recycling capacity, it hits the market at the right time and also that we have the right amount of capacity because if we have insufficient capacity we're going to end up with a waste problem if we have too much capacity we're going to end up with businesses that aren't necessarily viable because there's insufficient waste coming through and so we've been constructing a couple of different models there's a group at Cardiff University that have just got this paper out beyond the event horizon there's also some forthcoming work between myself and Professor Rob Elliott and Dr Viet Nguyen Tien um, which is modelling the end-of-life UK market for batteries. We've been trying to forecast not only the quantities of batteries that are coming through the system, but also looking at the potential mix of chemistries in the UK market. Um, we've been working with Argonne National Labs using a development of their Everbat model to try and apply some LCA and techno-economic evaluation to what a UK recycling industry might look like. We've also got some work coming out that brings together the Everbat model combined with GIS to look at where you would optimise the geospatial positioning of lib plants in relation to the sources of waste that exist out there. And so when you look at the techno-economics of recycling, they're very sensitive to the transportation and logistics of waste products. And you want to ensure that those recycling plants are located as close to the centres of waste as possible and that you optimise that. So that's something that we've been working on. Um, and unsurprisingly, perhaps from the University of Birmingham, our finding is that the first recycling plant should be uh, in the West Midlands, in the middle of the country, near Birmingham which takes me very neatly onto our um, next slide, the University of Birmingham's plan for scale up and demonstration. So the University of Birmingham's made a big investment in Tysley Energy Park, which is gonna be a center for demonstration for a range of different energy technologies near the center of Birmingham. And there's a whole host of different technologies that are going to be deployed on that site. But one of the things that's interesting from a battery recycling perspective is the Birmingham Energy Innovation Centre, which is going to be a hub for some of our work around critical materials amongst other research. And within that building, we're going to look at developing an integrated approach to electric vehicle recycling, leveraging a lot of our work around robotics and automation to look at both how to recycle electric vehicle batteries and remove those from vehicles, but also there's another stream of work at the University of Birmingham that is looking at how to take electric vehicle motors and how to recycle the neodymium rare earth magnet from them using a novel process that's been developed and patented by the university. 
So there are some similarities between recycling electric vehicle motors and electric vehicle batteries. And if you think about the challenges at different scales of disassembly, so removing the motor from the vehicle, um, then being able to take the motor to bits, then being able to extract the magnetic material, there's actually lots of commonality there. So in terms of some of the manual handling tasks for removing the motor, in terms of some of the um, challenges around the diversity of different designs, the weight of the motor, the physical bulk of it, and then as you start to take things apart around um, being able to dismantle cable looms, and then when it comes to the actual motor itself, you know, the use of glues and adhesives to hold magnets in place, the similarities there with some of the challenges with glues and adhesives in electric vehicle batteries, and of course the opportunity for design for manufacture. But as I mentioned earlier, there's this proprietary process that's been developed by the University of Birmingham that is able to decrepitate neodymium rare earth magnets to make the magnetic material easy to recover and to turn into new electric vehicle motors. And our aim is really to take an integrated process um, to the dismantling of cars. And if you look in this next um, short video, you can see our approach, so rather than the sort of production line approach where you've got a sequence of robots, one after the other, performing a, an action, we believe that actually there's such a diversity of vehicles to deal with that actually you may be better off tackling that at one station with flexible robotics that are able to change their tooling and adapt to different vehicle configurations and geometries. A theme that's come up a couple of times in this presentation and is something that I think the industry really needs to give consideration to is how might we design lithium ion battery packs better um, to enable recycling, so design for recycling. And I think some of this could be around standardisation, so the less variety that we have to deal with when recycling battery packs, the easier we can recycle them. Some of them is also about conscious design decisions, so making things easy to take apart, and perhaps reducing the variation in the types of fixtures and fastenings that are used within that. Um, also thinking about the elimination of glues and adhesives, um, thinking about how we can maybe have mechanical fixings rather than sticking things together. And I think some of the same challenges for designing lithium ion batteries um, for recycling we could also apply to electric vehicle motors around that standardisation, removal of adhesives. And I think also there's an opportunity in terms of that communication of data um, between the product and the recycler to be able to identify components which will optimise the way in which we're able to recycle them. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation under these strange circumstances. I'd just like to draw your attention to our paper which was published in the journal Nature in its 150th anniversary issue. It may be of interest to you, recycling of lithium ion batteries from electric vehicles. Um, so the details are there. Um, next to my contact details, if you've got any questions about the presentation, if there are any issues that you'd like to follow up, I'd love to hear from you. I would love a discussion and hopefully in the future there'll be an opportunity for us all to meet in person at another event. Thank you very much.